Hello, this video is going to be about compass calibration, which is the procedure where you take your drone or whatever it is that you're trying to calibrate the compass of, and you turn it around this way a bit and then that way a bit, and then hey, it's calibrated. Only sometimes you don't need to do it, and sometimes you do need to do it, and sometimes you don't do it quite right, and it needs to be done again, and it can all be a little bit confusing, and you may have actually found yourself doing this wondering what the hell is going on and thinking maybe somebody's just trying to make you look silly while you turn around and around. Uh, but that's not the case. You do actually need to do this sometimes. So the trick is to know what is going on while you're doing this and then you'll be able to figure out for yourself when it's necessary and you'll be able to see perhaps, uh, at least in the case of a drone, if the drone is moving in a way that sort of indicates that this calibration has not been done properly. So we'll try and look at all of that in this video. Before we get into the details of compass calibration, let's first take a look at why we even need a compass in the first place. I'd always thought this was kind of obvious, but I do get questions about it every now and then. So just so that we don't leave anybody behind, let's take a quick look at it. Uh, suppose we have a drone or some kind of vehicle over here. It looks like a drone here, so I'll call it a drone. And we want the drone to fly itself over to this position here. So this is a known GPS location and we have another known GPS location because we have a GPS sensor on the drone so that it knows where it is at the current time. And from these two GPS locations we can calculate a bearing and also a distance to know how far we have left to go. And I've called this 85 degrees because it looks about 85 degrees if you look at this in the frame of reference of north being uh, upwards and east being 90 degrees over here. That would be about 85. So this is great because it tells us two very important pieces of information, which direction to go and how long we have to go to get there. In other words, we can uh, alter our speed based on this as well. So when we get close, we want to slow down. So this is very important. But these are not the only two pieces of information we need to know because what the flight controller needs to do now is grab hold of the pitch and roll stick, so to speak. Of course, it's not going to do it physically, but inside its little brain, it's going to do the equivalent of grabbing hold of this pitch and roll stick and it's going to have to push this stick in some direction to get the drone to fly in the correct bearing and it's impossible to do this unless you know which way the drone is currently facing so you might have been thinking well you just grab the stick and move it to the right don't you well no because I didn't tell you which way it's facing for example if the drone was facing this way so if this was the front of the drone then the appropriate stick movement to move in that direction would be to push it the stick mostly forward and a little bit to the right as well. So hopefully you can see that that would get us to go along the dotted green line. But if the front of the drone was over this way, then we'd actually need to move the stick backwards a little bit and to the right, like this, to get it to go along the green line. So that's the reason we need a compass. If we don't know which way we're facing, we cannot take the appropriate movement control to travel in the desired bearing. Um, and another thing I'll just mention at this point is that if we don't get a really, really good compass reading, we're not going to travel along the green line exactly. So if our compass reading is a little bit off, we might go, for example, a little bit more along this blue line or a little bit to the lower side of that green line or something. So the compass is very important as far as going in the right direction is concerned. Now just to cover a few more basics, you probably know that the Earth has a magnetic field, which is what we're trying to detect with our compasses, and you can imagine this to be like a gigantic big magnet at the center of the Earth like this, so you'd have a south pole and a north pole like this, and the magnetic field lines are kind of emanating from the poles, and they go out like this and then back into the other one and as they are further away from the poles they are weaker so that's signified by the spread of these lines and as you're closer to the poles they're stronger so the magnetic field is not the same strength in every location that will become important later on and as we can see from this diagram the direction of the field is not the same at each location either so this would be the equator and the field lines are going pretty much flat along the surface of the earth kind of but as we get closer to the poles, they're sort of directed a little bit more downwards into the surface of the Earth. And when you're at exactly the North Pole, uh, in theory, they would be straight down into the ground. Now, another very important thing to note is the North Pole 
and the South Pole that form the axis that the Earth spins around, and that's what we typically call the North Pole and South Pole. But the magnetic North and South Poles are actually in slightly different locations, so that will also be important. So to find out which way those magnetic field lines are pointing at your current location, there's a couple of ways you can do it. One is the old-fashioned way like this, which is a physical compass. There's a little magnet inside here, and this will align itself to the magnetic field at my current location, which you can see north is that way. But we don't have any of this primitive kind of stuff in our drones, do we? We have something a little bit more like this, and typically you'll find the compass and the GPS together because they both need to be separated away from the rest of the drone with the motors and the current carrying wires and stuff that can cause interference to these rather sensitive sensors. So if we have a look in here, we can see the GPS is that big white thing that's not focusing there. And this, oh, I'm really going to have to get some focus. There we go. Uh, this little thing down here that says L883, if I can just get that to focus, there we go. Right about in the center of the screen, you should see a little tiny chip. And that is a digital compass. And obviously there's no moving parts in there, so we don't get a physical display like this to tell us anything. The way this works is it will give us a number, and let's say this is the front of the compass there, which it usually is. If I have this little chip aligned exactly with the north-south line like this, it will give us, um, I'm just going to give some example numbers, this is not really exactly how it works, but let's say that when we're exactly pointing at north, we get the number 1, and that means we've got it perfectly aligned to north-south. Uh, perfectly pointing north that way and if I point it perfectly south like this then it would give us for example negative 1 and if I put it somewhere in between we get numbers in between 1 and negative 1 so maybe if I point it west I'd get the number 0 for example alright let's get into the nitty-gritty of why calibration is necessary and it has to do with the accuracy of that number that I just mentioned that the compass will give us and how it's affected by different factors and being at different locations on the planet and so on so I'm going to use an example um, to hopefully make this a little bit clearer so imagine if you will that you are sitting in the center of a spherical room somewhat like the uh, cere cerebro thingy that you might have seen in the X-Men movies. It's a big circular room, a spherical room rather, and you sit in the middle here to focus your mind powers or whatever like that. Um, so I'm going to draw that like this. It's just 2D diagram, but remember this is a sphere. It's in 3D. And you're sitting in the middle, and this is your point of observation. And the walls of this spherical room are painted so that there is one point on the wall over here that's perfectly white, and one point over here that's perfectly black and every other point on the walls in between is gradually fading between perfectly white and perfectly black and these are going to be north and south doesn't really matter which is which but I'll typically call white north and south will be black and if you were sitting <coughs> excuse me if you were sitting in a room like this you'd be able to look at any point in the room at any any time and you would quickly see where the white is and where the black is but remember that the digital compass does not have the ability to just look around at any direction. It can only give you the number for the direction that it's currently pointing in. So I'm going to create an analogy to that by saying that you're not allowed to look at all around the room. You're only allowed to look at one little spot on the wall over here through a very narrow tube. And when you look at that spot through the narrow tube, you're going to get a number uh, and it's going to, well, this is your narrow tube. So this is what you would see. You don't get to see all of the room at one time. You just get to see whichever way you're facing. And it looks like we're kind of facing something white here. So this, for example, um, when you're looking down the tube, you would also see a number that gives you a reading for how white that spot is there. Uh, it actually looks more than 0 0.85. But just for example, you would get a number between 1 and negative 1. So in this case uh, 0 0.85 would be like about here somewhere maybe. Um, so the point is that you can't just look around anywhere all the time. You just have one little spot that you can look at. And as I mentioned before, the spots in between will be spread 
between those two extremes. So here would be 0, here would be negative 0 0.5, and I'll just simplify this diagram a bit. So if you were to look around at some other locations in this room, you would get a picture roughly something like that after a while. So let me simplify this one step further to more accurately reflect the fact that we can only see one point at a time. And keep in mind the goal of what we're trying to do here is figure out which way is north or south or well. If we know which way north is, then we know all the other directions as well. So let's just say we're trying to find which way north is. And suppose that we just happen to look at this point and our reading was 1.0 exactly. Does this mean that we are looking at north? Unfortunately, no, because as I mentioned just before, the strength of the magnetic field at different parts of the Earth is different. So even if we are looking directly at north, um, in some parts of the world we might get a lower reading or a higher reading. So this doesn't really tell us exactly anything uh, on its own. How about if we were looking at a location that was 0 0.4? Does this tell us which way is north? No, this also does not tell us anything much because if we go back to this diagram we have a 0 0.4 about here and another 0 0.4 about here so there's two of them and all that this tells us is that we're about 45 degrees away from north in one direction or another so north could be about here or it could be about here and we don't know which it is and we also don't know exactly how many degrees away it would be because like I just said we don't know um, how strong the magnetic field is at our current location. So one way to solve this problem of not knowing which direction it is is to use a second axis. And these little digital compasses, the little tiny thing that I showed you on the circuit board before, they actually have three axes that they are measuring at the same time. I didn't draw the third axis on here because it would be coming out of the screen towards us or into the screen away from us. Um, but just keep in mind that there are three axes and we can measure them all at the same time. But just for this two-dimensional example, if we had now 0 0.4 and 0 0.6 like this, from this we can actually tell where north would be because if we go back to here, so we've got 0 0.4, 0 0.6, we go back here. So we've got a 0 0.4 would be here and a 0. Point, oh no, no, hold on. 0 0.4 is here and then 90 degrees to the right of that is 0 0.6. Uh, so this would be, it would have to be, the 0 0.4 would have to be here and the 0 0.6 would have to be here, right? So north is going to be in the middle, north would be about there. So this solves the problem of the ambiguity that we had when we only have a single axis. So that's why we have a three axis compass. But unfortunately there are still some problems that this calibration procedure needs to overcome because in addition to not knowing how strong the Earth's magnetic field is at our current location, it turns out that these little axis things that we're using to measure the strength of the field in each direction, these are not perfect either. When they're manufactured there is a little bit of an error in them. So if we were to look at the wall, for example, in this position and look at our reading of 0 0.85 or whatever it is, this is not going to be a perfect number because it's going to include a little bit of error that we don't know what that error is. So for example, let's say that error was 0 0.1 just to keep things simple. Instead of having a nice value going from 1 to negative 1, uh, it would all be shifted over so that it's 1.1 and negative 0 0.9. So what that means is that if we were to look at a point like this going back here. We already know that we can't just look at one point and get the direction and say that this is north just because it's 1.0. But now it gets even worse because if we had an error of 0 0.1, this this 1.0 value would actually be about here. Or here, I guess. One of, one of the two. But either way, it's not the brightest point on the wall. And we need to look all around the wall. So this is... You should probably beginning to figure out why we need to hold the drone and turn it slowly around and around and around to let it get a look in all the directions so that it can figure out what is the brightest point on the wall. In this case it might be 1.1 and the darkest point might be 0 0.9. So that's that's why this calibration procedure happens. So just to give you an example here to finish up with, let's suppose you turned your drone around and around and as you turned it round, it picked up these readings on 
well, just look at one of the axes. It's doing this for all three axes, of course, but uh, just say, suppose these are the values it got for one axis. And by now, if you know the kind of uh, example I'm getting at here, you should be able to see what is the northernmost direction and what is the southernmost direction. You've probably already seen it by the time I've been blabbering about this. But this value here is the highest among them, so that would be north if we're calling a high value north, and this would be south. So once these maximum and minimum values have been found during the calibration process, they can be recorded and we can use them while the drone is flying around to adjust the values that we get from our digital compass while we're flying. For example, if we got a value of negative 1 with this, with this particular calibration in this example, we know that negative 1 is not exactly south. Negative 1 would be a little bit off south, so it would be about here or here. Well, one of these two. But it's not here because we know that if we're directly pointing south, we should be seeing a value of negative 1.16. So now that we know what the calibration process is actually doing, you should be able to see how the quality of these calibration values would affect the accuracy of movement and why sometimes the flight controller software might complain to you that you didn't do the calibration properly. And I'm mainly thinking about um, ready-to-fly quadcopters like the DJI Phantom and so on that have a integrated software on the tablet or your phone or whatever that tell you step by step what to do. If you're using an open source flight controller like iNav or something like that, it's quite possible that you could do a calibration that's really terrible and you just may not even know it. But for the purposes of what I'm talking about here, um, let's say that the software con complains that you didn't do it properly. In most cases the reason would be that you turned around too quickly and you didn't let each axis of the compass look at north and south enough. For example, if this here was our actual calibration values that would be pretty terrible because there's only what about 20 or so of them here for example we've got 0 0.92 we decided that, that was north before but what if actually 0 0.95 was here and that was north and we just didn't look at it quite directly enough to measure it that would mean that every time we tried to move towards north we're not actually moving towards north but we'd be moving a little bit to the east of north and every time we moved somewhere we'd be going slightly in the wrong direction and the way this problem will manifest itself, at least for a drone flying, is a bit like this. Remember in one of the earlier diagrams we looked at, we had a bearing calculation, the green line that we wanted to travel along, and we said that if the compass calibration was not done very accurately, then we might actually go a little bit off to the side, for example, in the direction of this blue line. So let's suppose that's what happened. And we got all the way to this blue point here, and I'm kind of exaggerating this a little bit because the drone will be continuously making corrections as it moves. So it's never going to get all the way over here without uh, figuring out that something's going wrong. But let's say it did. And from this point now it has to recalculate and go in this direction to the green dot. But once again, because the compass is not correctly calibrated, it's going to go a little bit too far to the left still. And if I put a few more points in just to show how it might perhaps proceed as it goes along, we get this effect where it's kind of circling the drain and it may never actually reach that point depending on a few other factors. And this effect has become known as the toilet bowl effect because of the way that water circles the drain in a toilet. Let's have a look at a real example of this happening. In this case the drone is supposed to be just staying still in one place, but because the compass is quite badly calibrated, even though it starts off sitting fairly still it gets worse and worse and worse and this is a combination of a few other factors as I mentioned before another important factor is how quickly the drone decides to move to correct its position in this case it's trying to move too quickly to correct its position in addition to having a bad compass calibration anyway so whenever you see something like this happening it's very very likely that compass calibration is the problem so the cure for that problem is of course to turn around nice and slowly so that we can get lots and lots of readings as we turn around and we also need to make sure that each axis of the compass gets a good look at both north and south. So I have a little uh, three axis thingy here, it's just some sticks with colors on them and I just made this up to represent what I'm talking about, a three axis compass. I should have maybe showed you this before when I was showing you the diagram. But anyway, here it is now. And the most effective way to do compass calibration is if you already know which way is magnetic north in your location. 
then all you need to do technically is take each one of these axes so for example the green one I'll point that north then I point it south purple one point it north point it south and then red one point that north and point that south that's all all you need to do and that's that will give you the most effective uh, readings or calibration values but I guess DJI didn't really want to explain all this stuff to everyone so what they said to do and this is as effective just about is to hold the drone like this so as you turn it around like this this is the first step in that video that we saw at the beginning of this video I think you turn it around nice and slow like that and what this would do is it would let the green and the red axes both get a good look at north and south so you'd go you need to go all the way around of course but it doesn't do anything for the purple one which is why they say do another step turn it 90 degrees or one way or one way or the other and do that again like this so now we're getting the purple one to see both north and south as well uh, the green one is getting done twice but that's fine I mean the more values the better and in this situation red's not doing anything but that's okay because we already did red just before so that's the reason why the so-called DJI dance is uh, the way it is so I think that should pretty much cover any of the mysteries associated with compass calibration and why it's done the way it is uh, there's just one more question that I mentioned at the beginning and that was why do you need to sometimes do it again even though you did it before and it was perfectly fine and we sort of looked at that a little bit and I'll just show you this diagram as a re reminder and one reason is that the strength of the magnetic field at different points on the Earth's surface is different so at this point here near the equator it's not quite as strong as it would be near the poles so if you move a certain distance say more than about 50 100 kilometers or something like that chances are that the Earth's magnetic field will be a different strength between the location that you were at last time and even if you do not move it turns out that the Earth's magnetic field is moving and if we just look at um, this page here and you can see all the details there but uh, this video is getting a bit long so I'll just skip to the juicy part and that is that the North Magnetic Pole is moving well the the entire magnetic field of the Earth of course is moving and just to give you an idea of how quickly it's moving and you can see that the magnetic North Pole is about I guess it must be here well it's pretty close actually now but this will give you an idea that uh, if you wait for a long long time and even if you don't go anywhere you still might need to do the compass calibration again but we're talking a matter of years here so <laughs> You might not even have the same drone after a few years anyway. Anyway, that's going to be the end of this video. Hope it was interesting, and I'll thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.